as someone who has had a baby cow in their house, I can vouch for the fact that this looks like a baby cow. I collect lamps. In fact, I collect lamps to such an extent that I have a backlog of lamps that I don't have space for in the house yet. We are renovating and we have some rooms that aren't finished, so I'm hesitant to rid myself of them until I'm absolutely certain we don't have a spot for the lamps that don't have a home yet. But I have been collecting lamps forever and I, sometimes I'll be so pained. I'll be at a shop and I'll see a lamp that I definitely don't have a spot for. And it's so beautiful and it's incredibly inexpensive and I have to leave it behind. And you know, you, you, <laughs> at some point there's too much, there's so much cool stuff in the world and there's so much cool, so many cool things to do. I think sometimes you just, you know, I have to call a spade a spade and be like, I've got too many damn lamps, which is what I do, uh, I don't know, about 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time I come home with a lamp and then my husband says, oh, we needed another lamp. I also think it's really important to hang things on the wall that you love. Uh, if you don't want anything on the wall, don't hang anything on the wall. Don't feel stressed. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for wall hangings, I wouldn't go to a big box store. I would go vintage all the way because you're going to find something that's unique and it's going to be far less expensive than something that you're going to find, you know, at a retail store. Uh, you know, and if you're not going vintage, I say get something from a local artist that you love and admire. There's all sorts of really great art festivals around or, you know, wherever you know, I know they have a lot in our uh, neck of the woods you know you can find nice pieces of art at an affordable price I think it's a uh, uh, how do you say I don't think it's I, I think it's a misrepresentation when people say that all art is expensive I don't think that's the case at all some art is expensive and some art is really reasonably priced I had this little picture here hanging in my first apartment. And when I bought it, I thought one day I am going to have land like this where I can run along those hills because I really like to run at the time. And, you know, fast forward, I don't know, 25 years. I have land like this, but I also have bad knees, so I don't want to run, but I walk it. <laughs> so dreams do come true. But it's just a thing I got from the thrift store, and I don't even know. Sometimes the original price is left on these guys. Look, I paid $2.98 for it. And I've just always kept up with it. I don't even know how that happens, but some things just tend to stick, don't they? I have a funny story about the owl on the wall over there. So I was uh, surfing the internet, as one does. And I came across an ad that had this big... Uh, you know, hand-carved owl is what it said. And then you click on the link and then they're talking about, okay, this is the most wonderful hand-carved owl and they show the craftsmen in Italy working and carving the owls. And these are handmade and this is a spectacular deal. They're only making a limited number of these owls. And I'm reading it and I'm like, just, you know, hook, line, and sinker. I'm like checking out Soul and I'm waiting for my owl to be delivered from the artist in Italy and it was reasonably priced so I didn't like spend a ton but I did considering what I got <laughs> anyway I'll get to that so uh, six weeks goes by and my owl arrives with so the box is like this big and I'm like huh that's strange because they showed pictures of it on the couch and 
possibly they provided measurements. Who's to say? I'm seeing a couch and I know what a couch looks like and the owl is this big. So I'm expecting something large. Okay. <laughs> I opened the box and my owl is like a piece of plastic junk. It totally is plastic. It's like a heavy plastic thing. Like someone carved the original and then they molded it and then it's been like spray painted. And that was the last time I bought something off an ad on the internet. I wish that were true. It's not true. But uh, yeah. So now I've hung the owl in the house because I paid a, a pretty penny for it considering that it's like a little plastic owl and I'm going to enjoy it and love it as if it were the large hand carved Italian owl that I had hoped it would be. I think adding houseplants to your space is never a mistake. Uh, the only mistake you can make is adding the incorrect houseplants to your space. So if you live in like a very low light, you know, situation, that's fine. You just need to get the right plants or you need to get the right grow lights. But uh, I think if you're looking for something that's going to add a ton of impact to your space, you cannot be a good houseplant. Let's say if you are living in a white box and just a very, very plain area, you add five houseplants to your space and it's going to totally change the dynamic of that room. What else can make such an impact? People can give you plants. You can find, you know, cheap plants. You can go to plant swaps and get cuttings. You can propagate. It's something that's so accessible to anyone. You don't have to get in like as deep as I am. I realize I am an extremist, but I have a plant shop. And so that's my choice. <laughs> but aesthetically, a few plants in a room is going to totally change the vibe for the better. So I highly recommend grab a houseplant and then grab a couple more and see how you feel about it. Don't let the fear of killing a plant be the thing that stops you. If you were to follow a few particular steps, your likelihood of not killing a plant would be uh, greatly improved. And so maybe I'll make a video on that for the very beginner. But for the time being, grab a plant that is low light tolerant uh, go with the pothos is my recommendation and they vine and they look amazing and no matter what the vibe you can have it looking modern you can have it looking like very bohemian you can have it looking uh you know totally you know extreme like i do with vines everywhere but uh house plans for the win we've been collecting crystals for a long time collectively as a family i'd say we have ones we found for the flea market. We have random rocks that people have given us, ones we find in the yard. I'd like to add to natural curiosities beyond crystals and things, we collect seashells and feathers and weird little rusty pieces of metal. I found these really cool little LED light up bases that, uh, we are using we put the crystals on top of them and it you know kind of makes them glow and it's uh kind of a cool look uh yeah we also grab corals when we can find them and these are like pretty old corals i don't even know if you can harvest coral anymore but those have all been like thrifted or found at antique stores we've collected crystals for quite some time now. I think it started out with the kids collecting rocks in the yard and then we'd find larger rocks and then we'd go to a rock shop and find a crystal here or there. Then people started giving us rocks and then it was seashells. One of my very favorite collections that we have here is the insect taxidermy and i have some vintage ones from the 70s that are like butterfly taxidermy and then i have some newer ones that artists you know create and my husband has um, gifted them to me so uh i don't have a preference over the vintage or the new ones they're just every single one that i have is delightful and i adore it 
And if this is something that strikes your fancy, I would highly recommend adding some to your collection. on the fly you can do this for cheap i had never bought a new couch up until a couple years ago i thrifted every single couch i had I, I had more time than i had money and i wanted quality and i wanted style and buying new you know to get what i wanted was out of my price range it was definitely out of my budget so i think if you think outside the box you know you can find something that you're going to like and you won't break the bank on it and i mean when i say i don't know the people who don't go to like goodwills and thrifting or flea markets very regularly quite understand the deals that you can have um i've got like rugs in my house that i've had for years and i you know paid twenty dollars fifty dollars for them and these are fantastic rugs that you know lord knows how much they would cost now but it's important to also kind of consider you know your effect on the world like if you can get something that's used uh, instead of something that's new do that because it only it only benefit it benefits everyone really and when i talk about things worth collecting it really is whatever floats your boat like whatever does it for you like i understand that plants may not necessarily do it for you if you're watching me though it, they probably do there's something in this world if you're someone who like has a house and you want to not live in an empty box something in this world that you can find that that you enjoy having around you that you would want to have in your house i say get that and then if you like it get more of that and then keep going from there i think people tend to overthink what they're going to collect or like how should we do it and i don't think that's the question the question isn't what should i collect the question is, why are you asking that question? Just do it. It really does look like a baby cow, doesn't it? 